Now we talked about what microservices are, we talked about their advantages, we talked about their disadvantages. Now let's talk about how you, how you actually go about designing one or implementing one. So the first question is, um, do you do one right off the bat? And usually the answer is no, because the first version of an application usually doesn't have the problems that microservices style solves. So if you put one in straight away, you're trying to solve problems that don't exist. Now using an elaborate distributed architecture will slow down development. I mean, <laughs> presumably if you really knew what you were doing, uh, you possibly you could do it straight away. But the point is, um, distributed computing is difficult to get right, it's difficult to do, and if you don't need to do it, then don't. Uh, so um, put in a monolithic application um, is not that bad. Later, when scaling is a challenge, entangled dependencies uh, become make life difficult, then you need to decompose the application. And usually it's the scaling and coordination that uh, tip the decision to go toward the microservices. Uh, one suggestion was that when, when the development team can't fit around the conference room table, so when they get to be more than about 25, uh, it's probably time to break the application up. Now I've seen this done, I've seen this, this same question come up um, many times and the whole question is how many people can um, coordinate their efforts well? Um, certainly in a development team the answer seems to be about five or six. You can get it up to about uh, say 25 but um, unless you do something spectacularly different it's really really difficult to get a large number of people tightly coordinated. It just doesn't happen that well. So the question becomes uh, one of timing. It's a case of when are you going to convert from monolithic to microservices uh, rather than uh, should you start with microservices at the start. Now, it's where to start? Well, imagine that you're building an online store that takes orders from customers, and verifies inventory um, and available credit, and ships merchandise. So it's a, your basic e-commerce store. You'd probably start as a monolithic application. There's plenty of them around and uh, it's a very well-known uh, paradigm so you just put that in. Application is deployed as a monolith. It's simple to develop and simple to deploy. So we've got your basic e-commerce system up. All right, what next? Well, we've gotten horribly successful. I mean we're getting up the size of um, Amazon or eBay or something like that and uh, it's, it's getting really really difficult to maintain this thing. It's getting especially difficult to upgrade it. So we need to start thinking about putting in um, uh, splitting this monolith up into microservices and the question is well how do we do it? Now, there's different bits of advice. Uh, some advice says well you, you decompose a monolith into separate small services and you work from there. Uh, another piece of advice is it's working, leave it alone. Um, start putting your microservices in with a new service. Don't try modifying the old service because you know, since they're so intertwined you don't know that what you're going to do isn't going to break anything. So start with a new service and implement that as a microservice. But let's pretend for the moment that we were able to magically um, decompose this thing into uh, services and so now we have what the architecture will look like, what we're trying to aim for which is a macro-service, microservice type of architecture. And uh, this is where the uh, application consists of various front-end macro-services. As you see there, we've got catalog, uh, we've got checkout, we've got the order management, and we've got the account management. And these are macro-services, for want of a better term. And these are uh, realized or achieved or, or performed um, through the combination of different microservices. Now the macro service has the task of determining what microservices need to be called and coordinating all the information that comes back out of them. All right, um, That's their job. And the microservices uh, do their specific tasks. So the transaction coordination is done at the macro service level and a microservice failure and um, that is, it's not there or it failed or it gave the wrong answer. Um, that also is handled at the microservice level. Now, as I mentioned before, microservices architecture tends to necessarily get into a layered architecture and fairly strict layering at that. 
We have uh, in this diagram, we have the process as a microservice, so we've got some composite microservices. And we get down to an activity as a microservice, and some, um, some process um, macroservice uh, is realized through uh, one or more, the coordinated effort of one or more microservices. But microservices themselves may need to be, may, may need to call on other things. And uh, now we get down to the data aggregation microservices. So the microservices may need to, to do some data aggregation and it calls on various data services. And the data services themselves um, would call on um, data access microservices, which may call on several different and uh, independent databases. So we have this um, fan out of uh, microservices as uh, was described before. And now, as I say, it, it tends to be fairly strict layering. Um, this, this is because these, the people who implement microservices, having, having had the difficulty of trying to manage a tightly interwoven um, monolithic architecture, tend to want things to be very strictly separated. So strict layering is rules. The um, data management itself can also be um, distributed. So to ensure loose coupling, each microservice has its own database um, schema. Now this is something that comes out uh, as well from time to time. This means that you're probably going to get duplicated data because the different microservices uh, do maintain uh, the different data. And you don't have um, cross connections with them all. So you have separate ones and now you have a problem that you have to coordinate these, um, this distributed data management. Uh, to take a monolith and refactor it, uh, one approach uh, said, you know, if, if you can't introduce a, a new microservice, you're actually going to have to start taking, um, uh, taking part of the functionality out of the monolith and creating a microservice. One approach is to create the microservice and put in some glue code between the microservice and the monolith. Um, now this is just an interim step. But the comment was, the glue code is messy, complex, and just plain ugly but it's a necessary first step.